right about now tutasimama tutasimama yeah as we usher in the speaker of today niko na a few facts about this person <laughs> he is one of the people nikikwambia kenya anafanya you won't even believe that there are pastors in that line so yeah his name is richard ndiwa he is an ammunition explosive engineer at the Kenya Defence Forces. Eh? Yaani umse umse wewe ukibadilisha tu dunia na neno yeye anaenda analipua dunia na anawapea neno bado. Eh? You see he is also on fire he's literally on fire for Jesus and he's a minister of the gospel here at DCAKZ. So guys let's give it up for Pastor Richard Akipanda. Karibu sana. Karibu. Karibu. Makofi, 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 makofi. Awesome. Good evening, ama ni good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. You can get seated. Yes, I am very much honored to be here this afternoon. I'm really grateful for the pastors in this church for welcoming me to come and speak to you. I'm a member in the church since 2012 been here for quite some time now. And I have many friends down here, right? As I can see, many of my friends are in attendance. I'm a youth too. And I love Jesus. The youth network groups are um, in a blaze. Do we have a blazers in the house? Yes. Um, mine is an open forum. We are going to be discussing on entrepreneurship in the ministry, how to become an entrepreneur, and how to begin a business and build wealth. And we are going to be interactive. Are we ready to communicate? All right. So, I'm going to read the word of God. Then, after I read the word of God shortly, we'll begin our sessions. And the word of God comes from the book of Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Now read from verses 29 to 36, but my focus is on verse 35. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. I can read from the screen. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, 
from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dagon and all the firstborn of livestock. Verse 30. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he or his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. 31. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also, take your flocks and your heart, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dove before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested. Thus, they plundered the Egyptians. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this afternoon. We glorify your name. We exalt your name high. Father in heaven, as we speak, as we interact, how I pray that my Father, I shall speak the word in season to the hearing of your people this afternoon, and that this word, my Father, that shall bring transformation, change, and growth to their lives pray this believing trust in Jesus name amen yeah where we've just read is a short story about the children of Israel in the land of Egypt well from reading that we might wonder where does entrepreneurship come from in that but just come along with me before you build you have to demolish right yeah, so we'll begin by demolishing a few things before we begin to build. Then I will show you the pitfalls as we conclude. Right? Um, the journey of the children of Israel began in Egypt. Uh, several years after God has spoken to Abraham and told him that your descendants shall be taken to a foreign land on slavery for 400 years. And a time had come when the children of Israel cried. God heard their cry and he called Moses to go and deliver them. Uh, sometimes we say that the children of Israel were delivered because they cried. But the truth is, their time had come. Their time of deliverance had come, and their time of slavery had come to an end. And that means there's no amount of cry at the year 200 would have made God rescue them. So a time came and they were supposed to walk out of Egypt. But there are a few things I would want to say about Egypt and why God had taken the children of Israel in Egypt. And um, one of the things that the children of Israel had gone to learn from Egypt was to learn government. Now, for many years I know we've been told that Egypt signifies a sinful nature. But truth is that Egypt is a place of mentorship. It's a place where God had prophesied Abraham's descendants to go and learn. So in Egypt, they learned government. 
In Egypt, the children of Israel learned the military. In Egypt, the children of Israel learned architecture. In Egypt, the children of Israel learned construction. You know, the children of Israel were pastoralists. And when they got to Egypt, they found their own son, Joseph, who bought all their cattle, exchanged with food. And now they were to be transformed from being pastoralists to nationalists. And to transform a pastoralist to a nationalist is not an easy journey. It had to take pain. Sometimes God will take us through very difficult times for us to learn wisdom. As a matter of fact, much of the wisdom you have, you didn't learn at your comfort zone. You learned during your difficult times, isn't it? Yeah. And um, after they learned in the land of Egypt, a time came and now they were to leave. And Moses instructed them to get silver, gold, and clothing from the Egyptians. But it's amazing that after the Passover, which is the shadow of our salvation and the shedding of the blood and smearing on the door walls, signifying our hearts and Christ, they were borrowing water and food in the desert. I want to send your mind thinking a man loaded with silver, gold, borrowing food and water. Something must have been wrong, right? I think I will go down there few things I would want to do from down there. Yeah, up top here is quite far. Yes, my friend. Um, loaded with gold and silver. Can you imagine of an instance you will be borrowing water and food? Can you think of yourself? It's quite a challenge, right? Because silver and gold signifies wealth. But what had happened is that the children of Israel lacked in authority. They had the wealth, but they did not have the authority to execute that wealth. It's one thing to have things. It's another thing to have the wisdom and the authority to function the things you have. And when the children of Israel were loaded with that, it's the same way I want us to see ourselves. In each one of us, there is something we are not utilizing. There's something within yourself that you are not taking advantage of. And I want to begin by asking a few of you, what do you understand by entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship, uh, venturing into business. Say it, venturing into business. What do you know about entrepreneurship? Uh, put 
putting my resources into <coughs> an income generating uh, activity, like a business. Yes, okay. Thank you. We have a mic there. Um, <laughs> yes, please. Yes, tell us. Just tell us. Okay, let me simplify it. Uh, what do you, what comes to your mind when you hear the word entrepreneurship, business, wealth, and the church, and faith? What do you hear? What do you know about that? Can we get a few suggestions, please? Someone to tell us what comes to your mind when you hear entrepreneurship, business, wealth, salvation. Yes, please. Uh, when I hear entrepreneurship, business, and salvation, I think it's uh, starting or identifying opportunities that are there in the market, st setting up a business, and in all that, I incorporate my salvation into it, help others see the glory of God through me in my business. Thank you. That's good input. Yes, please. Entrepreneurship is the process is the process of utilizing and getting a necessary resource to to run and start a business. Yes. Yes. Someone else to tell us what comes to your mind when you hear entrepreneurship. Uh, for me, entrepreneurship. I can say it's using the available resources to generate wealth and uh, in connection to the word. Uh, I think it's in Deuteronomy somewhere that God has given us the power to make wealth. And uh, through one of the preachings that we've got here is that uh, the church and uh, the body of Christ needs uh, money for, like uh, yesterday we were being told, like uh, vis visiting uh, prisons and such like things. So, for, so God has already provided the resources, so it, it is about us uh, looking for the opportunities to generate the wealth. Oh, that's good. All right, that's enough. You guys are good. Clap for yourselves. Yeah. You guys are extremely good. That's good. Now the game is on. I'm the chaplain in the military. And probably you're wondering what kind of entrepreneurship I am in. Uh, I am a director in the Word in Season Ministry. It's a global marketplace ministry um, across four continents. I'm also the director for Grief Recovery Institute in Africa. We help people who have gone through losses. I'm also the team leader for School of Wealth in Nairobi. Been doing this for several years now. And um, I have other businesses that I do with my mentees in electronics. And I'm also in the import of Christian materials from the USA to Africa and Christian material in Sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, that's... That's a bit of what I do. And so today I'm really privileged to be here to share with you these nuggets that will help you to become an entrepreneur. And to bridge the gap between what we know and doing what we know. The biggest gap in the world is the gap between what you know and doing what you know. That's the biggest gap. So I want to say that today, you're actually not here to acquire more knowledge because you already have enough knowledge. But I am here to bridge the gap between that knowledge and executing that knowledge, putting that knowledge into practice. Are we in order? Are you ready? So, I'll begin with um, 
saying that in everyone and each one of us, there's something that you're not utilizing. And probably you're thinking, I'm 14 years, 15, 19, 20, 30. What can I really do? Because probably you've heard that business is for the big guys. You, you must be coming from a certain kind of family to be in business. Well, I began my journey in business at the age of 22. I'm 29. I've been in seven years in this journey. That means every one of us is eligible. Because there are things now I know, I wish, I knew while I was 14, my life would have been better than it is now. And those are the things I am here to share with you guys. Sawa sawa. And I want to ask, when schools close and you're at home, after you read for six hours or more, because of course you're supposed to be concentrating in your studies, um, what happens? You watch a movie, visit a friend, right? But you have, have you ever thought of, probably to the ladies, of making something with the beads? You know beads? You know you can make a few things with beads and sell and earn money? Do you know that? Yes, it's a practical example. Um, some years back, I helped a lady friend of mine in the university to sell the beads, uh, to sell the things she made out of the beads. And by the time we were done with that kind of business, she had made 12,000. Used to make our beads in the evening, a few articles, then she would bring to me and I would sell to my friends. Did she make money? Yes. So what are you doing with your time? There's something you can do with your time. Apart from watching movies. Well, movies are not bad. I was inspired by movies to join the military. I watched Swasniga. <laughs> Claudia Fadem. Those days, I know. <laughs> Yeah, some of us here might never remember such guys, but yes, those are the guys who inspired me. So movies are not bad, you can do them, but now I know better. I saw some guys doing drama up top here. Well done, congratulations, clap for those guys. Wow. Now, those guys and most of us who can do drama in school, you can think of going for the auditions, the National Theatre. Yes, and turn your talent and skill into something that you can be paid to do. Those are some of the ideas you can put into practice. Again, we usually have a VBS for the Sunday schools. You can train such kids on acting and be paid something. You're making money, isn't it? Yeah. And um, such guys would rise to become the stars. The national TV will be watching. So I'm here to focus more on your skills and the talents you have and how you can turn that into something that can earn money. Well, I know it's not everyone who is gifted with books, but we have different talents. Well, a talent that is integrated with a career pays better, but you can always begin somewhere. I've seen the Gideons wash cars on Sundays, and the guys get to pay 200 for cars, right? You're making money. All I'm doing here is to disseminate a few ideas that you can begin to do at 14 years.
When I was in high school, there used to come guys who used to perform the set books. And we used to give, or we used to pay 1,000 for those guys to come to perform. I studied in the village, deep in the village. And so, I believe if you can act and get to such a level, you can earn something for yourself. After you finish your fourth form, before you transition to college. I know there are people here who are gifted and talented with um, cooking. Cooking is a business. You can turn your cooking skills into a bakery and turn such skills to cook for, for events. And you get paid, is it? Yeah. In this, uh, in, um, in this month, there are weddings in this church. If you know how to cook, you can co join with someone else who is a professional cook. And you assist them and you earn something out of that. So refine your skills. Again, you've seen guys go to the university, finish probably a degree in BCom, then years down the line they are running a bakery or they are rearing chicken and it is making more money than what they studied in school. I sold charcoal in this Nairobi. After work, I would sell charcoal. Make the right 45, 44, and my journey transitioned in entrepreneurship out of charcoal. It looks like a dirty job to do. You know, we are so clean and so educated. But money, when you get money or you earn money from anything that you do, as long as it's within the law, that money is clean, right? And so I know there's money in these businesses that we don't think of engaging in. I also have a friend of mine who sell, uh, they sell jugukarangas. They go to school having a few packets in their backpack and when they are done with classes, they sell to their friends. Are they making money? Yes, they are. So for those that are in college, there's something you can do too. There are several guys, are friends of mine in the streets who are now doing chapatis. Is it, is it that's, that, how, how many minutes does it take to cook a chapati? Uh, it depends. Uh -huh. uh, I think that, uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yes, she said 20 minutes the small pack. We want to begin small, right? Think big, start small. Right? So 20 minutes, small pack is done. Ask your mom for your jiko utoke hapo inje, prepare chapati, ama prepare kwa nyumba utoke nazo hapo inje, ama ukuja nazo on Sunday, uzie marafiki zako. Wakati muna salimiana hapa inje, for those that know me, I only speak of what I do and what is coming up that can help uh, someone. I'm speaking about the programs that I facilitate and how they can be of, of help. Mambo ya story mingi tupunguze zenye kidogo azita tupeleka mahali tunataka, sindio? So think of such things, they can really help. And so, um, Isaiah 33, verse 6, Isaiah 33, verse 6, Isaiah 33, verse 6. Well, I can read. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time and the joy of your salvation. 
wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time and the joy of your salvation. What is wisdom? Wisdom is understanding knowledge and executing it. I repeat, wisdom is understanding knowledge and applying it. Yes, we say sometimes wisdom is applied knowledge, but through this you cannot apply what you don't understand, right? So you need to understand wisdom before you apply it. So the place of business and entrepreneurship is a place of wisdom. Godly wisdom. Because our God is our creator and he gives us wisdom. The Bible says, if you find yourself lacking in wisdom, ask God. Right? And it means God gives us wisdom. Most of the times, we have a lot of information, but we don't know how to turn that information to something tangible. Every one of us here knows something that the other doesn't know. Applying the element of wisdom, you can turn that into a business. What knowledge does, knowledge gives you hope. But hope without strategy is chaos. Hope without a strategy. Sometimes you can hear some, someone speak to you so powerfully, you have a lot of information. You say your heart has been blessed. But your life has not yet changed. And you wonder why. It's because you've not yet understood that knowledge to turn it into a skill. So it's like having a 4,000 cc engine in a car without a steering wheel. You do more damage than good. That is what happens with us in the marketplace. Now, friends, um, we ask God for wisdom, but God will not come to open our minds and put wisdom in our minds. God will take us through experiences. Good ones and bad ones. And through those experiences... God will bring you to the place of relationships. I failed in eight businesses between the years 2012 and 2014. And I prayed so hard to ask God why am I failing in business, yet I am tithing, I am worshipping, I am doing all I can. But God told me something that in 2014 would change my life around. And he said you need to extend your level of relationships and the people you know and get yourself a mentor. Jesus had relationships. There are places he could go and sleep, eat and sleep in the night, right? So if Jesus had relationships, we also need relationships. So in the year 2014, during business summit in the church in January, the host speaker, a 
after he had shared with us for two hours, I sought him out to be my mentor. So, who are your relationships? What does the book of Psalms 1 say about relationships? It says, blessed is a man, Psalms 1 from 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. This verse is talking about relationships. A person who does not sit, stand. Verse 2. But he delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruits in season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That bit of the Bible is talking about relationships. How are your relationships? Who are your friends? What do you do with your friends? What do you discuss when you meet with your friends? What are your friends doing? If your friend knows how to cook, you can go, they teach you. And if your friend knows how to act, you can go and speak to them on how they can help you to act. Or if you know a friend of yours who knows something that you would want to do, you can go and learn from them. Learn something. Make good use of your friends. Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. Yeah, bad company corrupts good business morals. Who are your friends? If my friend here found me with a madman taking tea for several days, he would begin thinking of me as a mad person, right? So who are your friends? Because the idea that you have will depend largely on the kind of friends you have to move to the next level. So your relationships determine how you define yourself. How do you define yourself? Do you define yourself as mimi ni mkamba wa Yesu? Or do you define yourself as the son of God and the daughter of God? How do you define yourself? The Bible says in the kingdom of God there is no Jew, nor Gentile, male, nor female. So how do you define yourself? Because the way you define yourself will determine what you do with the ideas you have. Because the difference between failure and success is a man. Psalms 1 1 just said, Blessed is a man who sits, who walks. Right? So, how do you define yourself? Because the way you define yourself will determine your routine. Do you define yourself as poor or rich? You're the son of God. So you are rich by status, right? It's the truth. So how do you define yourself? Now, we have said that 
how you define yourself determines your routine. Yeah, your routine. What do you do with your time? What do you do with your time? Are you the kind of a person or your friend can call any time and disorientate them and disorganize them and call them to go out? Or are you the kind of a person who is scheduled and knows what they are doing with their time? I find some, some guys to be very free, like Naweza kupigia simu saa ngapi unamuuliza na kuambia anytime. Jamaa ako open. Kwaana hiyo telephone booth. Even a telephone booth is busy at times, right? So how are you utilizing your time? What are you doing with your time? Because your routine will determine your character. Your routine will build your character. You know, the spirit of God is the spirit of sound mind. You've been in school and seen some people perform better, but their character is not in alignment, right? The same with business. It's no difference. How you conduct yourself in business, how you do business will determine how far you will go in life. So, how are you taking care of your character on Facebook? What are you doing with your Facebook status? What are you putting or posting on your Facebook status? Because kuna kitu ni mtawana umeandika Facebook status yenye itanifanya kidogo nisikuamini ukiniambia huko na kitu inaweza nisaidia, si ndio? Your Facebook status is very important. Most of the times we ask ourselves, how can I begin business and I don't have money? And I want to give you an idea. I know you have smartphones and you have friends in WhatsApp and Facebook groups. You can go to a shop, greet the owner, get to know the owner, if they sell shoes. Get a shot of the shoe and post to the group of your friends. And whoever says they are interested, if the shoe cost 500, you add your 200 shillings. So you sell the shoe at 700. You have pocketed 200. Ukiwa kwa nyumba, sindio? Sinikuenda tu peleke, miatano upewe kiatu, uzie manzako of 700. You have your 200. At the comfort of your home. Sini ukweli. Si marafiki zako wakiona hiyo kiatu ni mzuri wataambia wazazi wao wanataka pesa. Wanunuliwe hiyo kiatu. Na ni wewe unajua mahali iko. Chata kuletea. You have earned something for yourself. It's not really the money that begins business, but it is the ideas that you have. That will help you. That's a very simple way to begin your journey on. I once became a middleman. I was in cabbage business and I failed. So during my leave, I went to Gikomba. I went to the guy who used to broker us and told him, I want to learn how to broker. This time around, I will help you and earn something small from what we make. He agreed. So, we utakuja na gari yako, lori yako yiko na cabbage, 
I look broke and get something out of it. Have I made money? I went there in the morning without money. But by the time I'm leaving there by afternoon, I have earned something. So there's always something you can do. Tell your friend there's something you can do. This was Jesus' philosophy. Jesus said, whatsoever will. Right? Whoever will. If anyone will. That was Jesus' philosophy. So he made anything can be made to become capital. And I know the, pro the problem is that we have been told for you to do something you need a lot of money. But the wisdom of life demands that think big, start small. There's always a small way you can begin what you want to do if you are really serious with it. And you know, as you do these things and begin young, you begin to understand money, understand how to manage money. Sometimes we take a lot of time in school and by the time we are out, we know nothing, absolutely nothing about the very thing we are out to look for money. So we are doomed. That's why someone will work for so many years and they have done nothing about their lives with that money. Jobs are good. I have nothing against the job. But there's something really wrong with getting a job without a business. Take it to your personal interest. The Bible says that the wealth of the nations has been given to us. And I want to ask you a question. Where is the wealth of the nations? Is it in the world of employment or in the world of business? Then it means God wants you and I in business. Because the same Bible says when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. And so as you build your business and get to the place of leadership, God's people will rejoice. Don't, would you want God's people to be happy? To rejoice under your leadership? So I want us to relate with the word of God with practicality. Because we are trying to bridge the gap between what we know and what we do with what we know. It's interesting that um, most of the times when we get to do business, we forget the place of God. But the Bible says it is our God who teaches our hands to make wealth. That means the kind of a talent you have and the kind of skill you have, that is your calling. Bible says your gift shall sit you before kings. So what are you doing with your gift? Because that is what will lead you to sit 
with the kings. But I want also to ask a question. Do you know what your gift is? Do you know what your talent is? Do you? Ask yourself that question. Because before you transform that gift into something, you have to be aware of it. I am gifted with speaking, disseminating information. Just sit down with my friends and share. And that's how I got to learn that I can speak. What do you do so well? Our sisters are blaming each other for gossips. But there's no problem with gossiping. As long as you're not gossiping someone, you're gossiping a product. At the end of the day, you make sales, right? Identify a product that you can talk about with your friends and sell. The basic skill you will need to develop your idea is the skill of sales, just selling. Nani hapa hajawahi uza kitu? Na nani aliwahi uza kitu? We have all, right? That is where the journey begins. then it means if you can sell something, you can begin to build your money from there. Jesus died in the cross. He died as sinner for us to be righteous. And the same Jesus died on the cross poor he that knew no poverty for us to be rich. So, the day that you got saved, the first thing that happened, it's not speaking in tongues, was status change. That is what happened. Just as the day the children of Israel during the Passover were living Egypt. There was wealth transfer. They changed their status from being slaves to owners of silver, gold, and clothes, right? The same thing. The day that you got saved, the first thing that happened was status change. You acquired the status of your father in heaven. Your originality became that of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means whatever Jesus did, you were able to do. Why? Because Paul said in the book of Corinthians, let this mind that was with Christ Jesus be in you. That means if we can have the same mind that Christ had, we can do the miracles Christ did. We can become a solution to our communities just as Christ was. So, tell your friend that your status is the heavenly status. You have the status of your father God. He owns everything. I want to ask you a question. What is a miracle? For the son of the president to have no money or for the son of the president to have money. What is the miracle? It's for the son of the president not to have the money, right? That is what ha is happening with us. We are the sons of a king. That means we have everything. He says he has given as all manner of blessings that pertains to Christ. So we are so loaded. Tell your friend you're already rich. 
It's only that you are not aware. That is the truth. I wish I knew that at 14. Ningekuwa nililisha kuku huko village kitambo. Nikaanza kuuza. And you are lucky you are learning this at this time. My life was transformed completely from this pulpit five years ago. And I believe someone's life will be transformed today from here. Amen? Amen. So, something else we learn from wisdom is that wisdom is the study of difference. Wisdom is the study of difference. When everyone else was doing counseling, I chose a path of difference. And I chose to do grief recovery, which forms a basis of the counseling. So what is your difference. And when everyone else chose to be content with their job, I chose to do something more. What are you doing that sets you a difference? Because your difference will determine your rewards. That's the secret with the wisdom of difference. To determine your rewards. How different are you in what you do? The skill you have. How well have you refined that skill? The talent you have. How well have you worked on it? Everyone can sing, isn't it? But is it everyone who gets paid for singing? It's the difference. It's the wisdom of difference. Everyone can cook. But is everyone who gets paid for cooking? No. Why? Whoever is getting paid for cooking, they have put into practice the wisdom of difference. So whatever you do and whatever you feel is your gifting and talent, find a way To refine it. To be of difference. There are guys here who like fashion. Probably you can begin with crocheting. Make scarves. I have a friend of mine in the church who is making scarves. Make a scarf and sell on Sunday to your friends. Probably 60% of the church members are youth in this church. Means these are people you can relate with, you can talk to, and even our parents, you can speak to them. And that is something you, you can do during your free time. So ask yourself, what gift do you have? And what can you do with that gift? Because wisdom, if you begin to pursue your gift, wisdom will give you the power of imaginations. The power of imaginations. Each one of us here can imagine something, right? Before everything happens, it's preceded by an imagination. You begin by imagining something. Before you call your friend, you begin by imagining uh, what you want to say to your friends. Before you come to the church, you have to imagine coming to the church, right? So, 
Wisdom will give you the power of imaginations because our mind understands the language of pictures. If I ask each one of you which side the door of their house is open, they will tell me, right? And yet they are not in the house right now. Why? It's the picture in your mind. If I ask you the color of the fridge in the house, you'll tell me. You are not in the house. It's the, it's the pictures you have. Your eyes, your ears, your touch. All those are a camera that you take pictures everywhere you go. That's why Christ came to give us a picture of heaven. So what are you doing with the power of imagination? Because before anything becomes, it begins with imaginations. What are you imagining? Who do you imagine yourself becoming? What do you imagine yourself doing with the talents and the giftings that you have? You can imagine doing something and turn it into something of value. Well, I um, grew up in the village. My parents had a small business. As I grew up, that is the picture I had in my mind. And today, I am in business because before the age of 10, that was the picture that I had. So what picture is in your mind? And what can you do with what you see around and what you know? I know the concept of entrepreneurship is quite quite difficult because in our education system we never get a moment to exercise the aspect of imagination. We tell you, see what I do, you do. And if you do that, you pass the exams. Nobody tells you, imagine of something that you can do which is very important. Your imaginations will give you the determination that you'll need to apply what you know. The determination that you need to achieve the goal that you have will have come from the kind of picture you build in imaginations. And the goals you will have set will determine who your mentor is. Yes. I know my time is up. But can I have a few minutes to finish up? Yes. So, the imaginations you have will determine the kind of a mentor you will get in life. And I would please urge you, my friends, get a mentor. Get someone who can mentor you in the skill, gifting, and talent that you have. Get someone who you can work with. What is the importance of a mentor? A mentor disciplines you. A mentor encourages you. A mentor is someone who is not happy with your level of success. Wants you to grow. And when you meet your mentor, it's wisdom I'm giving you guys. Don't ask for money. Because from your mentor, you learn values. You learn wisdom you learn knowledge. And you learn character.
concrete to building what you wanted to build. So seek out for someone who you know knows what your talent is or they do in the marketplace what your talent is and they begin to work with them. I failed eight times truly because I didn't have a mentor. I was trying to chart the course without clarity. Now I know better. After I got a mentor, I have been able to build several businesses. So I'm giving you practical wisdom. Who was Elijah's mentor? Uh, Elisha's mentor? Elijah. So mentorship is biblical. So get yourself a mentor. And as I draw to the close of this, I will show you the pitfall. We did have a whiteboard, as I would have shown you a few diagrams, but I know you are creative enough. Between where you are now and where your destiny is, and where your victory is, and where your opportunity is, is one thing that is deterring you from crossing over. We are afraid. We are so fearful to cross River Jordan to our victory and our destiny because we are afraid of the giants. Now, what giants are we afraid of? What giants do you think we are afraid of? What giants are making us not to practice our talents and giftings? And what we think we can do? The, uh, the number one giant is the fear of making mistakes. We are so afraid to make mistakes. So afraid to make mistakes. We freak out when we begin to imagine that we can do something new because we are afraid to make mistakes. Number two, we are afraid to embarrass ourselves. So th those are the giants that are making us not reach our destinies, which are making us not live a life of victory. We are embarrassing ourselves. The other fear is the fear to learn new things and to work in new environments. We are so afraid to work on environments we are not familiar with. And we are so afraid to learn something new. Everyone feels so comfortable with what they know. And the last fear is the fear of building relationships. We are afraid to build new relationships. I want to tell you the truth of business. Honestly, you might not be able to go very far with your idea, with your gift and talents, if you are not willing to make new relationships. You love to break from your circle and meet new people, talk to them, tell them what you know, tell them what you want to do, and tell them what you feel God has created you to do. So embrace yourself. And push forward to making new relationships. Any questions? I'm done. I can take a few questions. We are learning something over a lifetime. You will retire from your job. But your business is here to stay and to be passed over to your generation. And your children pass it over to another generation. 
ile mighty power. Any questions? You can give them. Yeah, he has a question. You can answer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So it's actually a concern and a slight question. Most Christians, yes, please. like maybe some of us, are afraid to venture into business because of the fear of compromise. In yeah. the essence, if you want to make money when, while broking, maybe you will end up being dishonest. So it's actually a slight concern and I wanted to know how maybe we as the young people venturing into business, now that you have experience more than us, how did you go about it? Well, it's a subject of uh, determining the price in the market and seeing how to place the price. A price is something that you put into place. Let's say you bought something five shillings and you want to sell it at eight shillings, you will have factored in a few things like transport for yourself, for whatever it is you are selling. And so to come in between, it means you are standing between the gap of whoever brought the product in the market and the customer. You know the customers as the broker. The broker is the person who knows all the customers and is the person who knows who brings the goods in the marketplace. So it stands in between. And I will give you a, uh, a scripture or a story in the Bible. When the king was going to a far country, he gave talents to three of his servants. And to one he gave one talent. Upon his return, he said, you ought to have given the talent or put it into a bank. And upon my return, I would have earned interest and you would be rejoicing with me. It's a scripture about being the middle person. So, do not be afraid as long as the market will always determine the price. Position yourself within that price. The market determines the price. Find a way to position yourself between or within that price mark. Have I answered you? Yes, you have. And now I have another question. Yes, please. You know, as I did, I knew what let him ask. We might learn something out of it. You've spoken something really sensitive about the job. Yes. Now I have a question about it. Yes. Now how do you identify your job and your work? Yes. Your job is um, what you do from 8 to 5. Your work draws from your talents and giftings. Probably you studied something. I say you studied nursing. But really, your talents and giftings are based in sales. Yes, your performance in school led you to doing nursing. But really, what drives you is selling. So selling becomes your work. Nursing becomes your job. So work really draws largely from your talents and giftings. That's where the strength is. Have I answered? Yes, you have. Another question? Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Uh, my question is, <laughs> my question is, uh, when you you have more experience than most of us, so what challenges did you have when you are getting a business to start up, and how can we overcome those challenges for those who want to venture into the tech business? Yeah, that's. That's a good question. Well, I'll begin by saying that my first challenge was communication. I grew up as an introvert. I couldn't really communicate with people. So that means I could not negotiate precisely. But in my hardships, I learned to be an ex extrovert. I learned to be an extrovert. I really now can talk and speak. The other challenge was the challenge of savings. I did business, but I did not save. Could do the business and eat all the money. And call my friends and we share the remains. Every young person wants to appear as though they have a lot of money, right? It's what we see in the TV. So coming from the village, I had money. And the third challenge, which now I have learned to save and to be disciplined, and I would say something at that, is your skill and talent begins to grow and it begins to bring money to you, don't be drawn to meeting needs. Please, do not be drawn into meeting needs. Everyone is crying needs, needs. And don't be drawn into acquiring flashy things for yourself. It takes time to build with wealth. It takes time. Allow your money to grow. After all, if you are the CEO of your company, you are still the CEO. So don't let everyone know who you are. Because at that, you will have money. If you are the CEO, you will have money. So you have to think along those lines. Keep your profile low as much as possible. If you have money, you have money. You don't need to walk with money everywhere for someone to know you have money. It's your money, right? You don't need to buy expensive things for your friends to see. If you have money, you have. So I learned that wisdom um, from my difficulties. The other wisdom I learned is um, trusting partners. I really trusted uh, one of my partners during those days. Alinigongesha ukuta mara mingi but now I know better because that time I had the money I felt like picking this guy he didn't have the money come we do the business and he provides time but I learned something if you want to partner with someone let them bring money too sababu kupata pesa iko ile discipline in Ayakanga Mutu. That person will have the discipline for money. So if you want to partner with someone on anything, let them also contribute financially. I learned it the hard way. Now I know better. In any partnership I am in, they share holding upon capital contribution. So those are challenges I learned the hard way. So you may want to think really hard before you seek someone. Really, your friend is not really the right person to be your partner, your closest friend. Because money breaks friendships. Issues of money can really break friendships. 
So seek out someone mwenye mnaingia hiyo level mkiwa mnaingia biashara. So any outcome it's not jeopardizing your friendship. So those are a few challenges that I learned. There's someone have I answered you please? Yeah. There's one more question on that side. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ambassador Testimony. My question goes, uh, anytime I hear this story about entrepreneurship, I really get challenged because I really don't have personal interest with entrepreneurship. Rather, I prefer someone else to do it for me because I'm a teacher. Um, I'm also the incoming youth parliamentarian Rishambu constituency. And uh, thank you. And each time, okay, about business, I love business uh, because there's a fish pond that I'm trying to set up at Gidurai 44. And I'm also trying to make sure that things are running differently. But I don't have a personal interest into it. My question is, do you really advise for someone to run a business for another person if I'm not really interested into putting my hands into it? Thank you. Um, thank you for that question. I'll begin by saying that out of my failures, I have learned something that business takes a lot of work. It's really difficult. It sucks you emotionally, intellectually. And This is something where your emotions and your mind will be invested in and must be invested in for you to succeed. If you do not want to be conned and taken advantage of, train yourself to begin doing the thing you want to do yourself. By doing so, you are able to know where the corners are cut, what the, um, where you can be taken advantage of. You can know what the demands of the business really are. Because if you entrust this to someone else, So before I begin any business, I always run it myself. At some point, you can let someone else do it for you, but when? You have really mastered what goes on there. Trying to get someone to do it for you, it might be costly. And it will be. Because they have the skill. So they have all the advantages. And they can easily shortchange you in the business and sideline you. And they end your business and they go to begin their own like that one. So the element of control is very important. And business draws from within, from within yourself. It has to be something really you are passionate about, something really you love doing, and that you will do yourself first before someone else does it for you. Have I answered you? Yes. Um, last question. And last question. Someone here? That's the guy with the mic. My question is, where is the, pay, the best place to place your money as in terms of saving? Is it in business? Is it in circles? or is it in banks? You can do, well, for starters, you can begin with circles. They have a better interest in savings, and also you can have better loans as your business grows from a circle as opposed to a bank. So 
I would advise you take the turn of uh, saving in a circle as you grow. Because you will need money to move to the next level of your business. So consider saving in circles. Accessing the money is um, easier and getting loans is easier. Yeah. Answer? After you grow, just something before I finish up. As you grow, you'll realize now you have to move from radical savings into investments. As you understand how businesses operate or the kind of business you want to do operates, you find that as money comes, you are in reinvesting that money. Be blessed. Come on, let's, we can do better than that. Let's clap for Richie. Awesome. I'm sure kuna kitu sisi wote tumepata. Whether you're in business or not, whether you're thinking to start or not. Uneza endo wambia mtu mwingine kule inje what you have learned. Hatu jengu itu tukai na yosini kweli. Awesome. So right about now nitauliza the protocol team. Wa the wakuje wa ashe wa speaker outside. Protocol team, Luis, thank you. Yeah, and as he ushers our speaker outside, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, number one. Yes, sir. In case you have any question, here is my number, my personal mobile number. You can call, ask me any question. Regarding business, 0717-066-885. My name is Richard Ndwiwa. In case you need to join a mentorship school, we, la uh, we run the School of Wealth. It's a mentorship program. School of Wealth. All right, you call me, you give me your details. Oh, 0717-066-885. Yeah, You're, in case you want business mentorship, you're welcome to our School of Wealth mentorship programs. Thank you.